Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and today we're going to talk about dimensional analysis, um, and that's using scientific measurements to solve problems. So dimensional analysis is a way that we analyze and solve problems using the units, or dimensions, of the measurements. And in dimensional analysis, we use something called conversion factors, or conversion facts. And these are just ratios of equivalent measurements that we use in these dimensional analysis problems. So the conversion facts, what does $1 equal? So we know that there's a bunch of things we could say. We could say $1 is the same as 4 quarters, or $1 is 10 dimes, or 20 nickels, or 100 pennies. So the conversion factor is a ratio of equivalent measurements, and we're writing them as a dimension. So for instance, we could say 1 foot equals 12 inches, and we could also say that 12 inches equals 1 foot. So we could then express that as a conversion fact, which is this ratio. So 1 foot is 12 inches, those are equivalent, or 12 inches equals 1 foot. And depending on whether we're trying to get from feet to inches or inches to feet will depend on how we write our ratio. So now we're going to introduce the problem solving method that we use in chemistry and most of the textbooks talk about it and it's called the ACE method. So there's three steps to problem solving solving. Let me try that again. There are three steps to problem solving, and the ACE method tells them to us. It's analyze A, calculate C, and evaluate E. So analyze. What do I mean? You're going to read the problem carefully, and I will harp on this quite a bit, but you're going to ask yourself some questions. You might have to read the problem several times, and you're going to find out what you are being asked to solve for. And you're going to write down important information such as the units. So what were you given? What do you want? And then you'll calculate. And when you're making your calculations, it may involve one step or it may involve several steps and substitutions, etc. And then you'll ask yourself, what fact might help me doing this? So you're going to set up a plan and you're going to say, all right, I have to calculate this. What can get me from this unit to what they're asking me for. And it might um, involve you're asking yourself, well, is there a formula I'm going to use? Uh, what formula do I need? So those are all the things that you do in the calculate portion. And then finally, when you've got your answer, you're going to check it. Does this answer make sense? Is it reasonable? Here's an example. If I asked you to calculate how many miles between the Earth and the Sun, and you told me 35 miles, I would say, is that a reasonable answer? I'm pretty sure that the sun is farther than 35 miles apart. So you're always going to ask yourself, does that sound reasonable? Is it in the correct units? I asked you for miles. Did you actually give me centimeters? Did you report the correct number of significant figures? So all of those are part of the evaluate. So let's look at a sample problem. How many days are there in 6.0 weeks? I know you can do this in your head, but let's use the ACE method. So first of all, what are you being asked to solve for? How many days? That's what you're looking for. And what were you given? Six weeks. So again, that is your given. Given and unknown. Super important. Then you'll analyze. Figure out what relationships you will have to know in order to convert from one unit to the other, so from weeks to days, for instance. So conversion factor, one week equals seven days, and seven days is an exact number. And then the setup, start with the given and work towards what you're looking for. So in this case, your given is 6.0 weeks and the unknown is how many days. And then you're going to calculate. And so you're going to say 6 weeks times, and here's your conversion fact. And again, top and bottom must be equal in value, 7 days in 1 week. And the reason we set it up this way is the unit we want needs to be on top in the numerator. We want days, so days is in the numerator, and weeks, the unit we're getting rid of, is in the denominator. 
and then we want to make sure the units work. So 6.0 weeks times 7 days in a week. Cancel the units to find out whether you've got the correct units for your answer. So you have week in the numerator and week in the denominator. That's going to cancel out. And then you're going to calculate 6.0 times 7 and uh, divide it by 1 because the denominator is 1. And so your final answer here is 42 days. Check your answer for sig figs. You'll notice that you were given 6.0 weeks. That number had two sig figs. The answer also has two sig figs, so it's all good. So in this case, two sig figs is the correct number to be reported. Now we're going to talk a little bit about proportions because um, in chem class we're going to encounter a lot of mathematical equations and a lot of proportions. So what is the difference between a direct proportion relationship and an inverse proportion relationship? And sometimes you think of it as uh, an inverse relationship, one goes up and the other one goes down, and in direct one goes up, the other goes up. So again, to recap that, in a direct proportion, when two quantities are divided by one another, you get a constant value. So when y is directly proportional to x, we read that as y is proportional to x, and that means that y divided by x is some constant. So what does that look like graphically? When x increases, y increases, and vice versa, so you'll get a relationship that looks like this, where when this goes up, this goes up, and you get this nice, in this case, linear relationship. How can you remember it? DD, direct relationship, then divide, DD. And so then you have an inverse proportion, and that's when two quantities, products, give a constant. So y is proportional to 1 divided by x. So y is proportional to 1 over x, or xy equals a constant. And again, the inverse relationship. One goes up, the other goes down. So when x increases, y decreases, and vice versa. So graphically, it would look like that. So as this one increases, this one is decreasing. Sorry, as this one is increasing, this one is decreasing. And so one goes up and one goes down. So for now, I'm going to leave it off at that slide, at this slide. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.